think one of the biggest challenges on this movie, but it's also a challenge on every movie I've done with Todd, is to always be super ready to just be flexible. I met Todd Phillips, the director of Joker, over 10 years ago. when He was preparing to do The Hangover. I think Joker provides us and certainly him and for the audience to see a different side of Todd and see what kind of filmmaker he is. Our philosophy on operating and our philosophy on lens position and other things like that is often scene to scene. We'll break it down in advance of shooting. We'll look at the psychology of the scene, the emotional content of the scene. And we'll think about, is this scene a long lens scene? Is it a scene that wants to be static? Is it a scene that wants subtle camera move? Or is it a scene that's handheld? Hey, hey, can you please stop bothering my kid? Sorry. The challenge was here we were dealing with an actor that was so phenomenal, best I've ever worked with. Every day we shot informed more and more about what the movie was. So when you do that, you have to be willing to change because you're now creating what the movie is as you make it. We approached Joker from a visual standpoint. You know, a couple of things just came to our minds instantly. One was just aspect ratio. We both have shot all of our movies 240, spherical. We've never shot anamorphic together, but individually we've shot anamorphic. We both came to each other and said, like, it feels 185. And Todd was like, it really feels like it should be shot film. I'm like, yeah, it does feel like that. Partly the movie's set in 1981. And it was fairly late in the game that we finally decided, okay, now we're going to shoot 65. We knew we were going to create a universe that felt like what our memory was of New York City in the late 70s, early 80s. We first started by just thinking about, like, what does that look like? A lot of Joker's character development has to do with a character that is in a big world, Gotham, people all around, but he's living this isolated, lonely life, almost like he's invisible. Allowing us to see the space he's in was really important, but I also wanted a lack of depth of field to really isolate him. But I was trying to think, like, would there be, ever be a situation where I wouldn't want to shoot with the Alexa 65? I just think it's a gorgeous format. And unlike perhaps a, a traditional Alexa job or 35 job where you might say, I want to shoot on Sumalux or I want to shoot on you know, S4s or Master Primes. Here, there are other criteria to come in. First and foremost is coverage. Right? What's going to cover the sensor? For us, we had a bunch of criteria. We knew we needed fast lenses because there were also very specific instances in which we were shooting in a theater in Brooklyn in which I knew Anything I do to augment the lighting has to work within the balance of these existing lights. So I knew I needed to have lots of situations for the movie where if I needed to shoot at a 1.4 or a 1.9, I still needed that, but I needed it with the large format, right? Because those were lenses used back in the late 70s and early 80s. And Matt at Airy, I think LA, who was like picking lenses and then shipping them to New York, he was essential because we were just like basically going, this is not going to be a pure... DNA set. This is not going to be a pure set of anything. This is going to be a Frankenstein set of lenses. And that's exactly what it was. It was literally, I think, 10 primes or 11 primes from a 35. I think we had a 28. We didn't use it that often, but we had a 35, we had two 35s, two 50s, a 58. Certainly had an 80 DNA, 135, 200 Nikkor. But some were double ups because one was faster and one was closer focused. But basically, we compiled this Frankenstein set of lenses that, as best as possible, were like old Canons, Nikors. There were some Leicas in there. Lenses that could cover the field of view of the sensor, but were still lenses that were modified to be on motion picture cameras and felt like lenses of that era. Todd and I, we are very situational about lenses. So if it's a chase scene, cops chasing him, across this busy street. We know we're going to just drive towards longer lenses. And on that day, we may actually have sub-rented a couple long zooms and been on the long end of the zoom because that stylistically and to cover the action and the energy of the scene that we're looking for feels long lens. Certainly in his apartment and in a lot of scenes where we're dealing with just the intimacy of him and he's not dealing in a world at large, we gravitated much more to to uh, wide lenses. And in those situations, yes, we were probably working with four lenses 
that 35, 58, 80, and the 135, that 90% of all those scenes were shot within those four lenses. We needed a lot of help to find those lenses, and Ari was great about it. How can we shoot two cameras, and with me, Joaquin, and Jeff Haley, all operating simultaneously, with no rehearsal, no marks, no even sense of what's going to happen. We were always rolling. We were always ready to shoot. And so he loved it, and he was, he was, he was so game for it. Jeff and I, let's say it was handheld, we would often just, I would be in the B position, he'd operate, we'd kind of define, I'd give him a little sense of like, all things being equal, don't cross that front light. If you can stay on this side of the line, it's gonna be better for lighting. And then I would pick an angle off axis, not photographing him, of course. And sometimes we'd literally dance together. I'd watch him, he'd watch me, if he made a move this way, I'd get out of his way, all the while photographing. And we would do this kind of dance all the time. Using Air Rental on this, it was a big deal because it was a brand new experience for me with a new rental house and a movie that was very important to me. But they were great. I, I mean, obviously, not just servicing the 65s, but finding those lenses and servicing them and having a bunch of other things that came up into play, you know? Four minis inside of old cameras that had to get jammed in and faked like they were old, you know, TV cameras on a talk show. Any other situational things that we needed, I can't remember one problem. I didn't know if I even really existed. But I do. People are starting to notice.